And now, the Mole Mystery Theater, presented by M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Welcoming you to the Mole Mystery Theater, a program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. Our stars tonight are Julie Hayden, well-known stage actress remembered for her brilliant performance in the play The Glass Menagerie, and Everett Sloan, stage, screen, and radio actor, soon to be featured in the Orson Welles picture Lady from Shanghai. They will play the roles of Alice and Albert Winston in tonight's exciting mystery by Robert Mitchell and Jean Levitt entitled The Betrayer. Well, Mr. Barnes, I know quite a few men who commit a crime by doing nothing. I mean men who mistreat their faces shaving and do nothing about it. To those men, I say, use Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's the smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tough whiskers or a tender skin. Enjoy a Mole shave tomorrow. And now this is Jeffrey Barnes and Act One of tonight's Mole Mystery, The Betrayer, starring Julie Hayden and Everett Sloan. about the Scott woman being murdered. That's what I want to talk to you about, Chief. But I thought it was suicide. No, Chief. Murder. Look, I want you to listen to these dictaphone records. Here, I'll play them back to you on your machine. Something to do with the case? Plenty. Now, listen to this. To whom it may concern, in less than 30 minutes, I'm going to betray Albert Winston. Yes, within a half an hour, I'm going to mail these records to the police and thus virtually end the life of a man I once admired, a man I have since grown to hate. And since only I know all the facts in this case, I have appointed myself both judge and jury. Moreover, the consequences of this betrayal will not matter to anyone except, of course, Albert Winston. At this moment, countless avenues of escape are still open to Winston, and were it not for these records... His disappearance would be simple. Cold-blooded stool yes, pigeon, isn't he? Who is it? Just let me shave your Very yes, simple. The whole matter started two years ago when Winston lost his fortune speculating in oil. He was desperate then. He had to have money to survive. So, although 40 and flat broke, he sailed for England, where he systematically set about to marry Alice Sexton, the giddy daughter of a wealthy textile manufacturer. <laughs> He's so very happy. It was a lovely ceremony, wasn't it? Yes, it and was, so Albert. quiet, just a few friends and father and Bishop Randall. That's the way a wedding should be. Don't you think so, Albert? Yes, I agree thoroughly, my dear. Hello there, you two. Am I welcome? Oh, of course, Father. I must say I'm very happy for both of you. I'm proud, Albert. Proud to have you as my son. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, Father, wasn't it a lovely ceremony? Just you and Bishop Randall are very good friends. That's the way a marriage should be. Yes, 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 yes. You're quite right, my dear. Now, run along a moment, will you? I want to talk to Albert. I shan't keep him from you long, child. Well, all right, Father, but only for a moment. Now, you see, my boy, I love my daughter very dearly. But I'm afraid she has almost no concept of money matters. So read this over and let me know if you think it's satisfactory. Here. What? But, sir, ownership of the Sexton Mill? That's right. You and Alice, joint ownership. 40% of the yearly profit. Quite a sum, my boy. Oh, sir, I, I don't know how to thank you, what to say. Then don't say anything, son. By the way, I suppose we'll be leaving tonight on the honeymoon. 
Well, as a matter of fact, we're not leaving until the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 4th of July, you know. Oh, yes, yes. Quite a holiday to you, Yankees. <laughs> yes, but we Yankees would hardly delay a honeymoon over it. It's uh, Alice. She's decided the thing for us to do is celebrate in a nightclub. She made all the arrangements. I think it's a bit silly, but I wouldn't hurt her feelings about it. Yes, my daughter does have um, silly notions at times. <laughs> well, good luck, my boy. <laughs> The music, the gay young people, and the two of us celebrating. Oh, darling, I'm so happy we had our picture taken here. Now we can always remember this. Uh, here comes the photographer back. Here you are, sir. Your picture, sir. And yes, very beautiful, too, sir. You and the missus are an handsome pair, all right, sir. Here, say you've been married ten years at least. Oh, I know. We are leaving. Been... Here, keep the change. Right, Earl. And thank you, sir. Oh, this is a good picture, but you forgot to smile, Albert. Oh, you know, I have a splendid idea. Let's write something on it that we will always remember how we felt tonight. Here's you first, darling. Come on. I think it'll be fun. Well, all right. Let's see. There you are. When in the course of human events... I, I don't understand, Albert. It's from the Declaration of Independence. Oh, oh, how clever. That was written on the 4th of July by the rebels, wasn't it? Uh, by the colonists, yes. Now it's your turn, Alice. Oh, so it is. Now let me see. Oh, I've got it. Yes, this will do nicely. There you are. I help Albert celebrate. Mm. Uh, very clever of you, Alice. Very clever indeed. Oh, Albert, you make me so happy. Really, you do. Little things mean so much to me. Oh, this has been a glorious day. And just think, darling, tomorrow will be on our honeymoon. <laughs> Albert, haven't these three days at the inn been wonderful? Well, yes, I... And of course, uh, as I've always told Father, there's nothing like a week in the country. Don't you think so, Albert? Well, I Fresh suppose... Fresh air is so uh, good for your health. Don't you think so, Albert? Albert, don't you think so? Fresh air is good for your health? Yes, Alice. I think it's wonderful for your health. Uh, what do you say we leave tonight and go back to London? But, Albert, we've only been here three days. Oh, Somehow I got the idea it'd been much longer than that. Really? Now, did you, Albert? Isn't that strange? Because after all, we came on a Tuesday, and this is Thursday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are three days, aren't they, Albert? And further... Alice, please! I... I think we should go down to dinner now, dear. Oh, yes, Albert, let's do. I think I'm going to have that wonderful lobster again. Don't you like lobster, Daddy? <laughs> Albert, dear, who's that lady over there? The one without the coat? I think she's a stranger. Do you know her? Uh, no, I don't. She seems to be coming over here. Um, I beg your pardon, but do you people happen to be returning to London tonight? Tonight? No, we... Uh, I mean, yes, yes, that's an excellent idea. Tonight, oh. Albert? But, darling, we intended to stay a week. We're going back to London tonight. Oh, well, then, could you possibly give me a ride? I'd be so deeply obliged. Well, it'll be a pleasure, Miss... Uh... Uh, Mrs. Scott... Mrs. Jones, Scott. You see, I came out here early this morning looking for a Mr. Peters, a friend of my husband, but, well, I find he isn't here any longer. Well, where is your husband? Why didn't he come out with you? My husband died two years ago. I thought this Mr. Peters could help me. You see, neither of us had any family. Oh, dreadful. No, and it turned to... Isn't that tragic, Albert? But tell me, what happened to Mr. Scott? Was he... Alice, doesn't it occur to you that you're prying? Now finish your dinner and let's be going. <laughs> to that adorable proprietor, Albert. I I've already he... made our goodbyes. Now, if you're ready, let's leave. All right, leave. darling, but he's so sweet. <laughs> and his name is Mr. Chin. Isn't that a peculiar name, Albert? You know, that's where the inn gets its name, Chin House. How quaint. Now, will you and Mrs. Scott get to the car? Oh, this fog seems to go right through me. Oh, you poor dear. Here, take my coat. I'm perfectly dry. And oh. Besides, in some feet, I'll be closer oh, to the motor. Oh, but I couldn't think of it. Please, I insist. Don't you think I'm right, Albert? Don't you think Mrs. Scott should take my coat off? It's all. a brilliant idea, Alice. Now, give Mrs. Scott your coat and get into the car. Here, 
here you are, Mrs. Scott. Now, you're going to lock this and keep warm while you might get pneumonia. Don't you agree, Albert? Don't you think she might get pneumonia on a night like that? I really don't think you should drive so fast, do you, Albert? I mean, you're an excellent driver and all that, but don't you think it's dangerous, Albert? I mean, with the rain and the fog and the road is so slippery that... ghost after all. How do you feel? Oh, I... I'm not quite sure. Where... You're in the hospital and lucky at that. It was, uh, well, it was quite a bad accident. Accident? Yes. Oh, tell me, Doctor, what happened to, to my wife? How is she? Now, now, we'll talk about that later. No, tell me now, Doctor. She was killed, Mr. Winston. Killed? Yes. The car caught fire. She was burned terribly. A Alice dead? You and the other woman were miraculously thrown clear. Other woman? What other woman? Don't you know her? Oh, yes, the one we picked up at the inn, uh, Mrs. Scott, yes, Joan Scott. How is she? Well, not too good, I'm afraid. Physically, it's just a matter of bruises, but her mind? Well, it was a serious shock, you know. Yes, of course. But you'd better get some rest now, Mr. Winston. You, uh, you should be out of here in a day or two, and, uh, Please accept my condolences on the loss of your wife. I realize it must indeed be a hard blow to bear. Well, 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 good morning, Mr. Winston. It looks as though you'll be leaving us today. Yes, I, uh, I'm going to Manchester, you know, to meet my father-in-law and attend my wife's funeral. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, but before you go, I'd like you to do me a little favor. A favor? Yes, yes. It's about Mrs. Scott. You see, to this minute, she doesn't remember one single thing beyond waking up here in this hospital. Oh, good heavens. Now, I'd uh, I'd like you to come with me, and uh, if you don't mind, and uh, uh, my plan, Mr. Winston, is simply this. You are Mrs. Scott's last definite link with the past. I see. Yes. Uh, and if she should see you suddenly and hear your voice, it may jar loose the barrier that is holding back her memory. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, here we are. This is her room. Now, go in alone and tell her who you are. I'll wait out here. All right, Doctor. No. It can't be. Alice. Doctor, uh, doctor. Yes, Mr. Winston? Uh, after the accident, uh, my wife, how did you identify her? Well, uh, as you know, the body was quite badly burned, but there was enough left of the coat she had on. I see. Uh, Mr. Winston, are you sure you're all right? Perhaps you should return to your room. No, no, it was just seeing Mrs. Scott. Yes, you see, Mrs. Scott brought the whole accident back to me. I, I'm quite all right now. All right, let's try your little experiment. Very well. Yes. Hello, Mrs. Scott. Do you remember me? I'm Albert Winston. How do you do, Mr. Winston? I'm afraid it's no good. Her memory is a total blank. Yes. It seems to be, doesn't it? <laughs> lovers. To everyone except her husband, Alice Winston suddenly becomes Joan Scott. Apparently, she's forgotten everything about her past, including Albert Winston. The question now seems to be, how much does Mr. Winston intend to forget? In just a moment, we'll find out. But first, Dan Seymour thinks he knows an experience no man could ever forget. <laughs> <laughs> 
And then that's when you run your razor over your face and it pulls, snags, tears, or scrapes. Now, if that happens to you, chances are you have tough whiskers or a tender skin. So shave with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Then you'll say it's smooth, so smooth. It's slick, so slick. It's the smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole. Yes, rich, creamy Mole is made to order for men who have tough whiskers or a tender skin. Because it is heavier, Mole not only softens your whiskers, it sets them up right, ready for your razor to take them off easily and painlessly. So enjoy a Mole shave tomorrow. This is Jeffrey Barnes again, returning you to the Mystery Theater and Act Two of The Betrayer, starring Julie Hayden and Everett Sloan. This Albert Winston permitted everyone to think his wife was dead and buried, eh, Inspector? Why? Apparently, Chief, he didn't care for the role of Alice's husband. No? Well, you can hardly call that murder, Inspector. No, you can't. But listen to this second record. I believe it was the exact moment that Winston walked silently from his wife's room, the secret intact, that I didn't like the man. For it was then that he gave the first evidence of the absolute ends to which he would go for money. He knew that if his wife remained in England, eventually everyone would discover that she was not Mrs. Joan Scott. So quickly clearing up his affairs, he left for America and took the supposed Mrs. Scott with him, convincing the hospital authorities that since he was responsible for the accident, he should take care of her, implying also that he wished to take her to a psychiatrist in New York City. In America, Winston, using the money that continued to be sent to him from the Sexton Mills in England, set up a luxurious Park Avenue apartment but goaded by the knowledge that his future rested on a precarious twist of his wife's mind, he spent endless hours testing her in a hundred different ways. What tea, Mr. Winston? Uh, please. You know, Mrs. Scott, I had an odd experience today. I saw a clergyman on the street and... For a moment, I was certain I knew him. Really? Who did you take him for? An old friend. A Bishop Randall. How odd. Did he actually look like your friend when you got up close, that is? No. No, not at all. Would you mind handing me the paper, Mrs. Scott? It's there on the table behind you. No, of course not. Alice. I beg your pardon. Did you say something, Mr. Winston? What? Oh, no. I... I was just thinking aloud. The Winston continued to test the woman he called Joan Scott in every imaginable way. Not once was the result positive. She even seemed to be another person. Quiet, thoughtful, a little shy. And gradually, Albert began to think of her as Mrs. Scott. As the months drifted by, Winston almost forgot about the guilt which was his. Chin House and Mr. Sexton and the accident became less and less real as Winston's life grew more luxurious, more entertaining. But then came a series of disturbing incidents. This pie is certainly delicious, Mr. Winston. I wish I were one half the cook, Mrs. Briggs is. Do we have time for more coffee? Oh, I think so. I don't imagine the Carters will be here for another half hour at least. Oh, incidentally, they managed to get tickets for that musical you wanted to see. Oh, Albert, that's wonderful. And what a splendid evening. Just the Carters and you, Albert. And... <laughs> Isn't that strange, Mr. Winston? I, I never called you Albert before. I'm sorry. It, it just popped up. Yes. Of course it did, Mrs. Scott. But don't let it bother you. Under the circumstances, it's quite natural. Well, I'm ready, Mr. Winston. Are the carters here yet? 
Mr. Winston, the Carters, have they arrived? What? Oh, oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. The Carters? No, no, I'm afraid they're a bit late. I'm afraid you're a bit tired. Perhaps you'd rather stay home this evening. I'm sure I could go alone. The Carters would take... No, home. no, no, I, I'll go with you. Why, I'm as anxious to see this show as you are. Besides, you look too lovely tonight to be without an escort. That's a new coat, isn't it? Yes, I was afraid you weren't going to take notice. Do you like it? I think it's stunning, Mrs. Scott. Well, I'm glad. You know, it was very strange. I couldn't decide between this plaid and a lovely covert until I noticed the labels in each. The labels? Why, what does this one say? The Sexton Mills, Manchester, England. What did you say? Sexton Mills, Manchester, England. What about them? Why should that make a difference? Well, Tell me, why? Mr. Winston, my arm, please, you're hurting me. Never mind. Why did that label matter? What does it mean well, to I don't you? No, please, Mr. Winston, let go of me. The doorbell, the cottage, please. It's Carter's... Oh, yes. Yes, of course, I... I'll explain later about this. I... I was only trying to help you. Help me? You, you mean about my past? Is that what you were trying to do? Trying to make me remember? Yes, yes, my dear. That's it exactly. I... I was trying to make you remember. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Scott, did you enjoy the performance? Yes, it was very good. Did you like it? Oh, I thought it was splendid. Of course, I can't go along with Carter's rabbit praise. Matter of fact, I find him something of a bore. That's why I preferred not joining them afterwards. I hope you didn't mind. Oh, no, not at all. What would this rain and the excitement of the evening? I'd just as soon be headed for home. The rain? Does it bother you, Mrs. Scott? I mean, is there anything in particular about it that you find annoying? I don't know. Strange, hard to explain. Why is it strange, Mrs. Scott? I can't say it. You mean you won't? Please, Mr. Winston, what's the wrong? Never mind my driving, Mrs. Scott. Think about my question. Think, Mrs. Scott. Oh, think about it. Oh, it's oh, 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 oh. What are you talking about, Mrs. Scott? There is no bridge. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of The Betrayer. Now, a word from George Putnam. Here's something to keep in mind that dandruff is hurting your attractiveness. Many methods are ineffective for combating dandruff because they merely do what plain water does, that is, remove loose dandruff. They don't destroy the germ called Pityros porum ovale that many outstanding authorities say is the cause of the most common kind of dandruff. For real relief, this germ must be destroyed. Now, a scientific product named Double Dandarine fights dandruff effectively because it kills this germ on contact. Double Dandarine is so remarkably effective that even in many stubborn cases, results have been amazing. And the reason for Double Dandarine's astonishing effectiveness is a special ingredient, an active antiseptic that's so wonderfully efficient, many hospitals use it. In Double Dandarine, we call it Alzan. So don't waste time by trying to combat this dandruff with ineffective methods that actually are no better than plain water. Use Double Dandarine instead. If you're not satisfied, you'll get your money back. Get Double Dandarine tomorrow. Come in. Well, how do you feel this morning, Mrs. Scott? I don't know. I'm very uneasy, troubled. I'm worried about you, too. Last night in the car, you seemed to have had an hallucination. You were so terrified, spoke of a bridge. Yeah, I know. I realize now it was something I dimly remember from my past. Oh? What's that in your hand, Mrs. Scott? Oh, the scratch pad. Well, let me see it. It's covered with scribbling. I've been so nervous this morning, I guess I just did it unconsciously. Yes, I guess we all... These two words. Why did you write them? Chin House. Well, I don't quite know. They have to do with the bridge in my past. It's seems to come to me and then escape me again. I, I know if I just concentrate, I'll remember. Yes. I guess you will remember. Mrs. Scott, I'm going to help you. Sit down here. Now, close your eyes and concentrate. All right. Keep your eyes closed. I have something here in my desk I want to show you. It might help you. 
Keep your eyes closed. Keep concentrating. Mr. Winston, Jim Hope. It's coming back to me, I think. I was there with a man, a honeymoon. Yes. Don't open your eyes, Mrs. Scott. Go on. Keep yes, talking. a honeymoon. Oh, why, I do remember. I do. Oh, Albert, Albert, I remember the wedding. Wasn't it a lovely ceremony? Just you and Bishop Lando and our very good friends. That's the way a marriage should be. Don't you think so, Albert? <coughs> Albert. Inspector, I, I suppose you're right. It was suicide. Yes, Mr. Winston. I've pretty well verified all you've told me with your friends and servants. She was a mental case. Often despondent, they tell me. I think the coroner's jury will bring in that verdict. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Winston, do you have a permit for that gun? Well, yes, of course, Inspector. It's uh, right here in the desk drawer. Here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what's that? What? The picture in the drawer there. Oh, Oh, that's uh, Mrs. Scott and I. It was taken in the London nightclub uh, shortly after the auto accident. I took Mrs. Scott out a few times to, well, to try to help her recover, you know. Mm. You don't look very happy there. I had just buried my wife, Inspector. Oh, sorry. Stupid of me. By the way, that's a that's an odd inscription. When in the course of human events. Oh, the... Declaration of Independence. Yeah, I think every schoolboy knows that, Mr. Winston. I mean, what's the point of it on this picture? Well, it happened to be the 4th of July. Mrs. Scott was helping you celebrate? Well, yes. Thank you, Mr. Winston. I guess that's all. Good night. For a moment after the inspector left, Winston stood staring at the closed door and smiling to himself. Then turning, he started to put away the picture of himself and Alice. And suddenly he started violently and the picture fluttered from his hand. He had told the inspector he had been with Mrs. Scott on July the 4th. He realized the mildest kind of police investigation would bring out the fact that he didn't even meet Mrs. Scott until July the 9th. The police would check with England. His whole lifetime conspiracy would be exposed. He was trapped hopelessly. That's why it is now time to send these dictaphone records to the police and betray Albert Winston before the inspector returns to arrest him. For now, his desperation is ultimate and endless. Now, the only thing left for him is a complete confession. Very truly yours, Albert. Strange, but it's true. A person can get so tired he can't do his work well, can't even get any fun out of life. Now, if you're that tired and pale besides, your doctor may find you have a borderline anemia resulting from a ferronutritional blood deficiency. Then, take ironized yeast tablets. They help increase your strength, regain your color by building up your red blood cells. So take ironized yeast tablets to get the energy you need to work, to play.